Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. If you're tuning in right now, um, a lot of you have seen maybe that it's World Day Against Trafficking. And because of that, I wanted to do this human trafficking training. It's kind of just something that was put on my heart this morning. And um, I've been seeing so many people posting about human trafficking. And um, all of a sudden, there's like all this attention being given to human trafficking. And I feel like a lot of people are really wanting to know what does human trafficking look like and how do I identify human trafficking and what am I seeing? Is this human trafficking? Is this not human trafficking? And um, just so you know who I am and why I have any right to talk about human trafficking at all, um, I'll just give you a little overview of my story um, as it relates to um, ending the fight against human trafficking, as some of you are logging on, hopefully. Um, so if you don't know me, my name is Brittany. If you're just tuning on, someone shared this with you. Uh, back in 2015, I went on a short-term missions trip overseas to a country called Latvia, and I was helping with uh, the fight against human trafficking. It was just a two-week trip. Um, we were working there and just had it so heavy on my heart and my husband's heart as well. Um, we actually moved to um, Latvia in the beginning of 2016 uh, to work with a YWAM organization called Freedom 61, where we were um, working on the streets with women who were working in prostitution, and we were also working at a center for women who were escaping that lifestyle. And um, we served there for a while. While I was there, really felt like um, my eyes were just open to this issue of human trafficking, and I started to understand Human trafficking is not just happening overseas in Europe and other places. Human trafficking was happening in the United States of America, and it was happening even in my hometown. In my small suburb outside of Los Angeles, uh, human trafficking was going on. And so that's actually what gave us the heart to move back to the United States. We moved back in the end of 2016 just with this knowledge of human trafficking is happening here, and I want to do something about it here. So I got very involved with an organization called Forever Found, which is an incredible organization here in Ventura County that's fighting the good fight against human trafficking. I started with a 40-hour training. It's the mentor training. Um, and uh, it was an incredible, incredible training all about what does human trafficking look like here in the United States. And that kind of led me to I started mentoring girls. I started a faith group with a group home specifically for girls that had been trafficked that I led for two and a half years before the group home sadly closed. Um, and I also helped Forever Found launch what's called the REACH team, a 24-7 response team. So uh, we assist law enforcement and children and family services, other, other um, agencies like that. As soon as they find a girl that's being trafficked, they would call the REACH hotline and we would go, or one of us would go uh, any time, day or night, um, to assist this victim. And I've gotten to do some incredible, incredible work on our 24-7 response team, sat with girls as they've been in the back of blacked out cop cars, identifying their traffickers as they're being dragged out of hotels, like crazy, wild, crazy stuff that's all happening within like 10 miles of where I live. Um, I've done even more training, so I've probably done around 80 hours of training on human trafficking, what it looks like here in the United States, and um, just had the opportunity to work with probably 40 to 50 um, girls here in Ventura County over the last three years. Um, so that's kind of where I'm coming from. Uh, and that's why I am super passionate about this topic, and I'm very excited to see um, other people getting passionate about this topic and passionate about the idea of ending uh, such a horrific thing. Um, what I want to tell you first is I'm going to be talking for like 30 minutes. It's like a training. I'm going to teach you kind of what human trafficking even is, what it looks like in the United States. Um, how do girls get trafficked? What kind of traffickers are they? Um, and also how do we identify victims of human trafficking and what can we do to help end the fight against human trafficking? Not end the fight, help end trafficking. You know what I mean? Okay. So... What I want to tell you first, human trafficking, the, the legal definition, human trafficking is a form of modern day slavery in which traffickers use force, fraud, or coercion. Those are like the three important words of human trafficking. If there is force, if there is fraud, or if there is coercion when someone is um, engaging in commercial sex acts or labor services against their will, that is human trafficking right there. Uh, it generates somewhere between 20, or sorry, 
20. I don't know where that came from. 97 and 99 billion dollars a year worldwide. So we're talking about a huge, huge, huge industry. Um, I feel like I need to address what human trafficking is not at first. Um, my phone is going off here as people are sharing different things, but I'm glad that it's working. So that's all I wanted to make sure with my phone. Um, what human trafficking is not. I feel like every couple years or every year there's like some viral video that goes live of someone talking about human trafficking um, and what it is. Um, for a little while there was posts going around about a mom in Target and some creepy guys were watching her two or three year old daughter and she said it's human trafficking um, beware don't let anyone watch your kids um, uh, recently there was another lady like last year there was someone who said I was outside of a grocery store and there were men just throwing women in vans and taking off um, it's human trafficking and uh, right now we kind of have the big Wayfair um, allegations um, hey there's children being sold in cabinets because they're ten thousand dollars a piece um, these are kind of big things that get people going like, oh my gosh, human trafficking. Um, but what I want to ask you is, are these actually red flags for human trafficking? Is this what human trafficking looks like in the United States or is it not? Are all of those things super creepy and should you pay attention to them and be like, that's really creepy? Absolutely. Super creepy circumstances. Don't like, like random guys watch your kids. Don't like engage in a white van that's throwing people and like, I don't know what the whole way her thing is going on, but it's all weird, right? But is it human trafficking? That's the main question. Um, people think of human trafficking and the biggest thing that comes to their mind if they think of a context of what human trafficking is, is the movie Taken. Um, that was a big, dramatic, amazing movie. Um, and people think that's human trafficking. People are just getting kidnapped. They're being ripped out from underneath a bed and like sold into sex trade. Um, there's only 3% of human trafficking cases that are kidnapping cases. So, um, again, with like the target thing, with the throwing people in vans, with the taken, that accounts for 3% of trafficking. Um, but that is not the main source of what trafficking looks like in, in America. Um, Another big misconception is that trafficking has to do with people from outside of the United States being smuggled into the United States, um, and that's our trafficking victims. People think it's all people that are from outside of the United States. Um, with all the kids that I've been working with um, over the last three years, not a single one of them was born outside of the United States. Every single person that we have been working with um, that I can think of is a United States citizen. So we're talking about our own people, our own United States citizens that are being um, trafficked. So do foreign people come in and are they trafficked? Yes, but is that the only way? Is that the main way? Uh, no, actually. Um, we see the foreign, foreign people coming in and being trafficked in massage parlors um, and especially labor trafficking. Um, I'm not going to talk about labor trafficking today because it's not um, my specialty. I don't know much about labor trafficking. I've never worked with a labor trafficking victim. So I'm going to stick um, specifically to sex trafficking. But I will say that for labor trafficking, 70% uh, of people that come in that are labor trafficked actually come in on valid visas. So they come here thinking that they're making a better life for themselves and they end up getting trafficked. So I won't go into detail on that. You can do more research on labor trafficking. But I've told you what human trafficking is probably not, but who is the biggest target for human trafficking in the United States? Is it everyone? Can anyone be trafficked? Um, anyone can be trafficked, of course, but there is a very specific uh, group of highly at-risk um, youth, and the biggest one is um, kids in our foster care system. So when we're looking at kids in the United States being trafficked, foster care is a huge, huge, huge area where kids are getting trafficked out of foster homes, out of group homes, um, these kinds of things. Kids that are in families that are under repeated CFS investigations, you know, they're not maybe in the best family situation. Those kids are highly at risk. Runaways, um, anyone that's constantly running away from their home, it's said that within 48 hours of a teenager running away, they are approached by a trafficker. 48 hours. Um, that just gives me chills when I think about it. Um, the majority of girls that are being trafficked, and boys and girls can be trafficked. It's more common in girls, um, but boys are trafficked as well. Um, but 
Up to 95% of girls that are trafficked have faced sexual abuse between the ages of three and five years old. So um, they've already faced a lot of trauma. And you might think, like, how in the world would a trafficker know that a girl has faced sexual abuse just by looking at her or whatever it may be? Um, Girls that have faced trauma, kids that have faced trauma, respond to situations much differently. They respond to danger much differently than kids who have not faced trauma. So they are at a much higher risk. Um, Also, girls that are, or kids that are in and out of juvenile facilities are very big targets for human trafficking. I've done a a training in a correctional facility here um, out in Camarillo. And I've been in the juvenile facility many times. And when I did the training at the correctional facility, there was probably 50 girls in the room when we did this training. And we asked them, how many of you know someone who is in the life, which is slang for um, being trafficked? And almost every single one of those girls raised their hands. So all of these girls know someone who is um, being trafficked. They don't think of it as being trafficked. That's why we don't say, how many of you know someone being trafficked? We say, how many of you know someone in the life? Um, they don't see themselves as victims, but I'll get more into that later. Um, the biggest age group that we see that girls are being trafficked, that kids are being trafficked, is between 12 and 14 years old. So that's your hot um, hot age group right there. So again, when you're talking about like a two and three year old being watched for human trafficking, it's probably not um, what's going on. I want to talk to you about the types of traffickers there are because um, this is a big deal. Um, The most common trafficking situation that we see is what's called a Romeo pimp, or uh, pimp is synonymous for trafficker. They call him pimp because it's like a really cool word, but a pimp is a trafficker, right? Um, The most common is a Romeo pimp, which is basically uh, your boyfriend. So these older men usually, um, at least in their 20s, if not older, are um, showering love and affection upon girls. Remember, girls maybe in foster care, kids uh, who are from really broken families, kids who are in running away. Um, they shower these girls with love and affection. Um, they act like they are in love with them. They want to be with them. They want to start a life with them. Um, and they spend a lot of time grooming these girls to believe that this is their boyfriend. It's not a trafficker. This is their boyfriend who loves them and wants the best for them before he kind of turns it around and says, like, I just need you to do a couple things for me. Money's tight. If you could just do this. Um, That is the main one I see. When we talk to girls all the time, we're not asking them about their traffickers. We're usually asking them about their boyfriends because that's how they see it. So Romeo, uh, Romeo Pimp is a huge one. Very sad one, family trafficking. Um, it's common in low income families. Um, if there is maybe a drug problem, especially with a parent, they need a lot of money. They're constantly asking their kid to help them, uh, support, uh, to be trafficking their kids as in, um, I want to distinguish this because I feel like people are confused when we say that kids are being bought and sold online. It's not that I'm putting up a child for sale for $10,000. You purchase that child and take it, take it away. It's that we're putting up ads for sex acts and they are purchasing that person over and over and over and over again. Um, So that happens in in family situations. Um, There's what's called a CEO or a manager pimp. Um, A famous uh, or a very popular um, survivor, her name is Rachel Thomas. She has an amazing uh, um, nonprofit called Ending the Game. This was her story, actually. She was actually from a great family. She uh, was in college. She is beautiful, and so she was approached by someone who said, hey, would you ever be interested in modeling? Um, She said, yeah, like, I can make some extra money while I'm working. Uh, He got her several, like, legitimate modeling gigs, had her sign a contract with her social security number, with her um, family's address and all these things, and then he turned around and said to her, okay, now you need to do these things. And when she tried to refuse, he said, here's the address of your parents. Here's your social security number. If you don't do these things, I'm going to kill your family. So um, terrifying. Um, Be careful if you're going into the modeling, acting industry. Make sure that you're being um, connected with legitimate agents, legitimate managers. Um, Gorilla pimp is another form of trafficker. This is very popular in gangs. And again, that's where the um, kidnapping comes into play usually. 
a gorilla pimp is a very violent from the beginning. There's no grooming. There's no, um, like, glamour to it. It's just, like, you are kidnapped, like, taken, um, and you are immediately forced to do things and very much broken down. Um, I did talk to a girl who was um, from this, and uh, only one. I've only met one girl that, that had that story, and it was very heartbreaking. She was very, very uh, brainwashed by the time I talked to her, which was very sad to see. So she was very much, like, um, happy about the life that she lived, and she thought it was amazing. Um, a non-common one, or something that people don't think about is it's called a madame, um, which would be a woman. So we think of traffickers or pimps as being men. Um, but there are women who traffic as well. They could be like very unsuspecting looking. They could look like very kind, um, and very normal, but they are trafficking girls. And another huge one that I see all the time, uh, you're going to have to forgive my French. I don't use profanity, but this is just the title that it is, um, is called the bottom bitch. And, um, sorry, cover your kids ears. Um, the bottom bitch is actually, um, she is a girl that's trafficked herself, and um, again, she doesn't see herself as being trafficked. She sees herself as in a relationship with this older person, and she is the one who recruits other um, girls to come and work for her pimp. So we see this all the time in group homes and juvenile facilities. It's actually really dangerous. Um, we get all these kind of like high risk girls together and there's one girl that's like still very loyal to her trafficker and she encourages other girls to run away with her and um, be a part of this. So those are kind of the, the full spectrum of your traffickers and how girls get trafficked. Um, the trafficking is very... Uh, intricate it's very sensitive there's a whole book written about how to traffic girls um written by a pimp to other pimps or other aspiring pimps on the psychology behind what it looks like to find a girl's weakness and exploit it until they are completely loyal to you and see you as their god this book was called pimpology it actually ended up in normal bookstores like barnes and noble all these different things before people were like what are we doing having books like this on our um, shelves? But all that to say, these traffickers are not some, like, dumb people that kind of just, like, work up some scheme that they want to traffic girls. There is, like, a huge psychology behind it all about exploiting um, vulnerabilities in these girls. So the question becomes, if these girls are not, like, in chains, right? We think of trafficking as being, like, locked in a chamber or something like that. Um why do they stay if they're allowed to kind of go about their way why why are they staying um the statistics say that 89 percent of women in the commercial sex industry want to leave but they actually don't see any other way um, or any other means of survival so that's a big thing is they don't feel like they can survive outside of of this environment um another huge huge thing that plays into it is trauma bonding um if you want to know what trauma bonding is, I'm sorry, but I'm going to destroy your perception of Beauty and the Beast because um, someone destroyed it for me one time and I'm going to do it for you. I'm sorry. It's a great movie. But trauma bonding. Okay, right? Um, her father is taken by this beast. She trades herself for her father's freedom. She gets locked in a chamber, right? She's locked in this underground chamber by this beast who's very mean and violent and all these different things. Um, but she starts to see his softer side and she starts to fall in love with him. And because it's a Disney movie, um, he ends up being a prince at the end and they live happily ever after. Yay. Um, but in reality, in real life, that beast who they fall in love with, who they're bonded to, is not going to turn into a prince, even though they believe he is. But that is trauma bonding right there. Sorry um, to ruin Beauty and the Beast for you. Um, another reason that uh, they would stay would be threats to the family. Like I said, with Rachel Thomas's story, they threatened her family. Um, another thing is uh, fear and abuse. There is a lot of um, abuse that happens with traffickers after they've gotten past that lovely grooming phase. Um, and there's a lot of head injuries, which the head injuries in particular cause confusion. Um, so the girls are kind of like in a haze, right? Not to mention uh, traffickers are usually getting their girls addicted to drugs. And so there's not that mindset anymore. And there's drug addiction. Drug addiction means I need money to get the drugs. Um, 
they also no longer feel, this is something we hear all the time, they no longer feel like they belong in what's called a square world. That's what they would call it. The world that everyone else lives in, they just feel like, I don't belong in that world. That's um, like, it's it's just not me. Um, they're used to making a lot of money really quick. And um, it could be hard to think about like going and all of a sudden making, uh, like working a job where they're making $15 an hour. That seems like, whoa, I don't want to do that. I don't know how to do that. Um also, this becomes their family. So the girls that they're being trafficked with, their trafficker in general, all of those people are the only family that they know. And um, so it becomes very hard to leave. And another very sad statistic, um, trafficking victims have the same rates of PTSD as veterans of war. So they literally have been through so much that they have so much PTSD um, even when they're, when they're found. What we see a lot of times is um, people are so excited about a girl being rescued. Um, we get excited, right, when there's a reach call and there's a girl being rescued. Um, but the amount of times that these girls end up running back to their traffickers is uh, it's just so heartbreaking. It really is. Um, it's hard to keep track sometimes of the girls because they're constantly running away. Um, they're just not used to that life. So I want to move on from that to tell you how do you identify a victim of human trafficking? That is like a huge part of the solution is if we can identify, if we know in our minds what does a trafficking victim look like, we can do our part to um, end human trafficking because we can report these things when we see them. And we've seen amazing stories of that. Uh, you know, flight attendants who said something looks weird about those two girls with that guy reports it and these girls are um, saved actually from not being trafficked in the first place. So um, some red flags for is this person being trafficked, whether it's someone you just see on the street or whether it's maybe you're a teacher and it's a student, uh, may just any anyone in your sphere, sphere of influence. Um, so if you see someone out um, that does not have any identification on them, they're not possessing any of their identification. That's a huge red flag uh, for trafficking because traffickers would take away things like driver's license or anything identifying. I had this happen to me before I um, had done training or actually I think it was right in the middle of me doing the very first training I did. I was um, in line at a, at a store in the mall and there was a, a guy and a girl in front of me and the guy was a little bit older um, and he said something weird. I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at my phone, right? Because we look at our phones. I was looking at my phone. He said something weird like, um, man, if someone saw me with you, they would think I kidnapped you. And I was like, what the heck is this guy talking about? Then I look up. This girl, her hair is like totally dyed. She's got extensions in. She has her nails done. Her hair, uh, her hair is done, and um, which is another like um, red flag if all these things are suddenly happening. And I'm like looking at this girl. And then by the time we get to the front, um, the guy had left. So he wasn't with her by the time she got to the front to pay. And she handed them a credit card and they asked her for her ID. And she said, oh, I don't have my ID. And they said, well, we can't let you purchase something on a credit card without an ID. And that's when she left. And it was like five minutes later that I was like, that was so weird. I should have followed her. Like I should have made sure she was OK. Um, was that girl being trafficked? I would say that was a huge, huge um, opportunity that I missed that that girl probably was um, being trafficked by this weird guy who made these weird comments. Um, so if you notice a student of yours or someone, uh, a teenage girl, that all of a sudden has a lot of things that they don't have that they didn't have before, like all of a sudden their nails are always done and their hair is always done. They have like nice clothing that they didn't have before. That's all part of grooming, um, which is the traffickers trying to buy their trust and buy their affection so they can believe that they're um, a boyfriend. Uh, so grooming would be a huge one if you notice that in someone that you know. Um, a younger girl hanging out with older man, I mean, that's just kind of a red flag in the first place. Girls, if there's, if you're a teenager and there's an older guy who's in his 20s or higher that's interested in you, um, just run the other direction because that guy has no business being with you and hanging out with you. Um, and if you see that, that's a, that's a red flag for you. Um, if you see a young person who seems to be sort of in distress and um, the older adult with them won't let them talk. So like if you saw them and you said, hey, are you okay? Is, is there, you're, you're doing all right? And the person said, oh, he's fine. He just uh, this and that. 
Um, I've seen this on a lot of doctor shows. I'm actually happy they're highlighting this. Um, you know, they'll go into a, a doctor's office or a hospital for something, and the the older adult won't let them speak. Um, if there's an adult that's not letting a child speak and answer any questions that are directed at the child, that's a huge, huge red flag that there's something going on. It doesn't matter if it's a woman, if it's a man um, that's doing the talking. Again, it can be family trafficking. It could be a madame. Uh, so just take that as a note. If, if an adult is not letting a child speak, there's something wrong. Um, if someone has another person who's paying for everything. So this one also happened before or right around the time I was starting to get trained. I was in a nail salon and I was getting my nails done. And this guy comes in kind of like he actually looked like a kind of typical pimp. Uh, he was wearing like a wife beater and a chain around his neck and these sort of things. And um, and he came in, paid, and then he left. And they said, oh, it's so sweet. He comes in and he pays for his girlfriend nails every week and she comes in and she gets her nails done and I thought okay that's kind of weird um and as I was leaving I was thinking like why why would he come and pay for her nails like why wouldn't he just say hey go get your nails done it's you know it's on me and hand her 20 bucks right um anyone who's paying for something else for someone like this girl probably was not allowed to have her own money with her this um trafficker had to pay for her nails to be done prior to her even going in Huge red flag. Again, an, a red flag that I missed. Um, so I'm telling you about some of my missed opportunities um, because of my lack of knowledge. But I'm hoping that because you're listening, you're getting um, knowledgeable. Um, branding tattoos. If you can believe it, um, traffickers actually do brand their girls with tattoos. Um, a lot of our girls that we work with have branding tattoos, which could be a name. I mean, obviously, a lot of people get names tattooed on them. But if you see a young girl with a name tattooed on her, um, that's weird. Money signs. Often the tattoos have to do with, like, money signs. Um, cream stands for cash rules everything around me. That's a huge uh, branding tattoo that would be on a trafficking victim. Uh, so if you see branding tattoos, um, that would be a huge thing. And if you're at a tattoo parlor and there's a girl there getting a tattoo that she doesn't know about – that's also a really big time to call the human trafficking hotline because I've heard of girls who um, they said, oh, yeah, I was going I wanted to get this tattoo, but they were doing another one on me at the same time that she didn't know about. That was a branding tattoo. Um, if they're tired all day from working at night, that's a huge one. And if they carry multiple cell phones, so a lot of our girls have uh, two cell phones because one of them is their personal phone and one of them is their their work, their work phone. So. Those are some ways that you can identify a human trafficking victim. If you see those things, call the human trafficking hotline, which I'm going to give you at the end. Um, I know a lot of times we feel weird calling. Like, I don't even know. Like, I just heard one training of this random girl on Facebook. Like, maybe I'm just over exaggerating. It doesn't matter. Like, just call. If something seems suspicious, we have that in our self for a reason. We have radars in our mind for a reason. And when you hear something or see something, call and report. So I want to let you know what we're doing locally because that's kind of the exciting part um, is there is stuff that's already being done in the fight against human trafficking. Um, Forever Found is the organization that I've been working with for the last three years. They're absolutely incredible. It's Ventura County and um, different parts in the world as well. But for the United States, it's Ventura County alone. We have our REACH team, which I told you about, our 24-7 response team. We have a SAFE team, which is um, if we get a call that um, – if we get a call that, hey, there's something suspicious, I can talk, hello. Um, if there's something suspicious going on, someone will call and we'll say, hey, we're not sure if that person's being trafficked or that girl's being trafficked, but let's go investigate and let's go talk to them. I've done a lot of safe calls where we just kind of go and I'll talk to the girl for a while, just kind of getting to know her. Hey, like you dating anyone? Who's the guy? Um, kind of getting information and helping them see like, oh, that's actually interesting that – you said your boyfriend is 25 years old because you're only 14, right? Like, I just want to let you know about some risks that come with that. And we often bring a lot of books um, that are really interesting for the girls to read that share survivor stories um, that they find really interesting. And that's the main thing is preventing, right? If we can prevent a girl from even being trafficked in the first place, that is a huge, huge, huge win. Um, we have a mentoring program. So Forever Found uh, does uh, a mentoring program. We have a lot of girls 
matched with some amazing mentors who have over 40 hours of training on human trafficking and trauma and the effects of childhood trauma and all these different things. So we have some amazing women who are walking alongside girls in our county. If you are interested in becoming a mentor or you're even just interested in the training, which is phenomenal, um, you would want to email Leah at foreverfound.com. That's or sorry, foreverfound.org. Leah is L-E-A-H at foreverfound.org. She can tell you about the mentor training we have coming up in September. Um, we do a lot of holistic therapy, so things like art therapy, equine therapy. Um, I do music therapy with girls. We'll all kind of just like sing songs for them and talk about, um, you know, what what's going on in these songs and that kind of thing. <laughs> um, I got to lead an amazing Bible study, or I call it a faith group faith discussion group um, with some girls. Um, Carol Island and I got to lead a really cool ending the game training. That's uh, Rachel Thomas, who I was telling you about, uh, had a 10-week course uh, for girls that have been trafficked on what happens when you're trafficked. Like, what was the uh, mindset that got you into trafficking? Um, how did you become vulnerable? How can you stop those mindsets? How can we continue to heal and move forward? That was a 10-week course that we got to do with six girls. Well, they kept rotating because girls come and they go and they come and they go. Um, but we had some uh, amazing discussions with these girls on um, how to retrain our brains to think healthy things so that we don't um, get susceptible to these things. So that was another cool thing that we are already doing. One thing you can do, or many things you can do, I'm going to give you a list. Um, be aware of your surroundings and your children's friends and your workplace and wherever you are. Just be aware of weird things that are going on around you and report them. The human trafficking hotline, are you ready for it? I'm going to give it to you right here. Uh, the human trafficking hotline is 1-888-373-7888. You can look that up on Google if you missed it. That's the human trafficking hotline. Um, ending the demand. That's a huge one. So the reason we have trafficking is because we have people purchasing sex, and that starts with pornography. So the only identifying thing between men who purchase sex, as in like are purchasing child, um, child people working in prostitution um, or being trafficked, the only identifying thing about these men, it's not age, it's not race, it's not a career it's not an income level because there are all of those things the only thing that I that connects all these men together is all of them have a history of pornography and so if you are struggling with pornography um, just get some help ask, ask for some accountability uh, don't live you know just hiding in shame and fear um, get some help with that because you are gonna do a huge part in helping end human trafficking if you can help those things inside of you that are um, leading you to look at pornography um, teach your kids about online safety. Whoa, online safety, you guys. Do you know where the main grooming that is happening right now? It's online because it's really easy for a trafficker to be messaging multiple girls all the time and grooming them. Um, it's a lot less work than having to do it in person. So, uh, girls, um, be careful about the pictures that you're posting. I get so nervous. I see some pictures on Instagram of you lovely teenage and college age girls in your bikinis and you look really cute um but there's some really creepy people that are also going to think you look really cute and be please be aware of the people that you're talking to online and if you're a parent teach your kids hey it's not okay to like send pictures to guys um that's a way that they um can also kind of blackmail you is if they have pictures of you if they have video um, blackmailing you into saying, hey, if you don't do this, then I'm going to share these things with your family. I'm going to share them with your friends, and you're going to look like a hoe or whatever it may be. So please, please, please be careful online. Um, if you want to, um, if you have financial abilities, giving towards amazing programs uh, like Forever Found or amazing organizations like Forever Found, um, those things go towards our reach team, our safe team, our holistic therapies. They help girls who um are being trafficked they help girls who are trying to heal from being trafficked forever found is a huge uh beautiful organization to be a part of but if you're not in ventura county and you want to give somewhere else just look for a really great organization that you know is doing really solid work um in your area um you can become a mentor yourself i already told you that september is our next training 
Um, you can become an advocate. You can start talking and using your voice and saying, hey, this is like not right that everything's happening. I'm seeing a lot of you do that right now, which is awesome. Be an advocate. Um, and foster care. If you are a foster parent, you are already helping in the fight against human trafficking. And I thank you so, 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 so much um, for helping kids that are in foster care right now. So if you're thinking about foster care and you have a heart for human trafficking, know that when you enter into foster care and you're taking in kids that are in um, really at risk situations, you are helping them not end up as a trafficking victim. So if you're in foster care, kudos to you. Love you guys so much. Um, that's all I got for tonight. Um, I don't know if you're listening live and you have a question, I can see them. Um, you can feel free to type them in the comments. And um, just some books if you want to do some further reading. Scars and Stilettos is an amazing book by Harmony Dust. She's the a trafficking victim who worked in strip clubs for a long time and now she has an ama amazing nonprofit where she goes into strip clubs and leads teens into strip clubs to bring gifts to them. We have a program like that going on in Ventura, inspired by Harmony. Um, that's Operation Grace, which I get to be a part of as well with Shar Bush. And uh, that's an awesome thing. So Scars and Stilettos is a great book. Runaway Girl is another great book. And um, yeah, I'm gonna just, you know, keep this live I'll be I mean I'm not keeping it live because that would be awkward if I'm just sitting here waiting um but if you post comments and you're asking questions I'm happy to respond to them after the fact because I'm sure a lot of you are going to watch this after instead of live so anyways thank you thank you for tuning in thank you for being interested in helping the fight against human trafficking we end this one person at a time one phone call at a time um, and so super grateful for all of you listening and thank you for raising awareness for human trafficking. I hope that you'll continue to get educated and help us in the fight against human trafficking. All right. Now I'm going to reach for my computer and turn it off, which is an awkward movement, but it's going to take a minute. But here we go. Thank you.